In today's video, we'll be looking at a bunch of your different opinions, hot takes and questions from the Pokemon anime community. And they all come from the lovely place of the Pokemon anime Reddit. So I'll be giving you my takes on all of them, no matter how wacky they might be. If you want to see me do more of these, be sure to let me know down in the comment section. And without further ado, let's get started. Should they have been Ash's rivals? The post is by Hello Howare U1111. The images in the post consist of Ethan, Lucas, Brendan, and Nay, the game character's anime counterparts. Now, here are my opinions. As much as I think it would be cool for Ash to have the game characters as his main rivals in each series, I actually disagree. I wouldn't be against the idea of this. However, I feel like they could be implemented in a much better way to allow the original created rivals like Paul, Trip, Morrison and the rest to still appear and take light in being the main focus for the anime, to showcase that originality, you know? For the game characters as rivals, I'm thinking they would be perfect as league opponents that Ash could have faced in the different leagues, that being their debut in the anime. I'm not talking about those opponents that Ash easily defeats at the start of one league episode, but instead, Ethan, Lucas and Brendan get a whole focused episode where they battle Ash and potentially an earlier episode where they do something at the league with him. I think you guys get my drift. Now, when it comes to Nate, the reason why I didn't say him here is because I believe that Hugh would be a much better rival to pick from if we're talking about game characters. Firstly, Hugh would have been a better character than Cameron and two, Hugh could have battled Ash in the Unova League and returned later on for the Enarch allowing his game story with his whole sister's Pokemon being stolen backstory to take place. And it would have been so perfect and an easy way of implementing a game character into the anime right. So yeah, the game protagonist as Ash's league rivals, yes. And Hugh as one of Ash's Unova rivals, yes too. And I'll definitely go into more details about my Hugh anime idea in another video. If Journeys was like the traditional Pokemon season of Ash traveling through the Gala region, who would you want his traveling companions to be? Go and Chloe or Victor and Gloria? This post is by Gigan vs Zilla 2018. Personally, I'd have to go with Go and Chloe because I really loved Go. However, if I'd say travel companions that I'd like Ash to travel with in a traditional season of the Pokemon anime, it would still be Go, but with the addition of Hop and Marnie. So, a four person crew, just like the XY gang. We have already seen what Ash, Go, and Hop would have been like as a trio when they were watching the Master Day battles in the crowd, and they really bounced off each other nicely. So, seeing that, it really made me wonder. What could this trio have been like for Journeys? Because not to hit on Chloe, but she just shouldn't have existed due to the way that Journeys handled her. That being said, to replace her, I think Marnie would have been a perfect fit. She could have still had her whole story arc done of wanting to save Spike Muff from an economic downturn by aiming to become champion along with how Ash and Hop would also be aiming to do the same. Ash, Go, Hop and Marnie. I think these four would make for a very fun and natural dynamic. What would your team be in a Hoenn anime part 3? The post is by Hello Ho Where You 1111 again. Alright, let me tell you guys, my team would not be coming to mess around, and it would consist of Sceptile, Swellow, Agron, Gardevoir, Milotic, Blaziken, and lastly, Absol. This team would follow the anime's format of Ash or the protagonist's chance of getting more than one starter in a region. Therefore, I went for my favourite too. For Absol, it would be my final 7th capture, kinda like Ash's Gibble or Melmetal, which haven't been with the team as long as everyone else, but still pack an unexplained amount of crazy power. I'm telling you, with this team, I'd be coming to beat the Hoenn League and also the Battle Frontier too. But enough of my team. I'd love to know what your anime team would be for a Hoenn anime. What legendary Pokemon would you like to see Ash catch? The post is by Hododon. Ooh, now this is a good one. What legendary Pokemon would I like to see Ash catch? Well, I actually have four legendaries I would have loved to see Ash catch in the Pokemon anime. And I think I have some pretty good reasons for them. First up, we have Urshifu. 
Now, the reason why it's one of my picks is because I think Ash getting a cub through in Journeys would have been perfect, literally. When the Arts of Armor got revealed and we learned that the player would be training a cub through of your own and helping it evolve into the two different Urshifu forms, it kind of just screened Ash catching Pokemon. I mean, you know, with him being a trainer who can easily get along with legendaries and the fact that this legendary needed to be trained up and just the whole theme of it being a special Pokemon, which Ash normally gets in most cases. I'm looking at you, Lana's EV. Urshifu would have allowed for Ash to really create a bond with this Pokemon, defeat many World Championship opponents and finally take on the Master's Aid together. And I'm sure a lot of you would have loved to see this. Also, let's not forget, it would have easily allowed for an Ars of Armor arc in the anime, which all of us wanted to see so bad. So definitely a missed opportunity, but it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. What it is. <laughs> For my number two, I'm going with Latias. Latias is such an easy choice and why I'd love to see Ash get one is for a few reasons. One of them is the movie, Pokemon Heroes. Of course, Ash made a connection with this Latias in that movie and most of us wanted to see Ash catch that specific one but sadly it at a time where Ash catching legendaries was just off the table. When the new Latias appeared and aimed to be a Pokemon master that needed help to save its brother, many thought in episode 1 that Ash would capture it. But then it flew away and everyone thought that was it. It was gone just like that. But just as the episode ended, Latias was seen following Ash. This following Ash thing continued all the way to episode 9 where it seemed almost obvious that Ash would catch this legendary, like everyone thought at the time. But everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked, as when the whole Saving Latios 2 part was over, these guys left. Like seriously, they said their goodbyes and dipped. And to make it worse, we even saw the original Latias from Pokemon Heroes in the ending of that episode. It existed. The movie was canon. So what the duck look was the point of aim to be a Pokemon Masters one? One of the biggest Latias fan driving theories for aim to be a Pokemon Master was that Ash would catch Latias to have a counter to Tobias's Latios which at the time many actually thought with this being Ash's final series ever that the anime might bring Tobias back for Ash to finally get his revenge against the man who humiliated him in the Sinnoh League. And boy were we all so stupidly wrong for thinking the anime would give us fan service. If you thought this wasn't going to happen from the start, really kudos to you because you're goaded. Man, I tell you, this series really had me dreaming then hit me and many hard with reality. Okay, enough of that ramble. We have my third legendary of choice, which is Giratina. Giratina. I don't know why, but Ash with a Giratina is just so cool. And seeing him flying on a Giratina in Giratina and the Sky Warrior was so damn epic. Also, the fact that Ash and Shaman saved Giratina's life and became friends, with Ash now being world champion, maybe in a few years, say Ash gets even stronger, I think this Pokemon would be a perfect result of that growth. Now, for the fourth legendary, it has to be my dragon goat, Zekrom. I feel like this legendary's appearances and moments with Ash makes it the true legendary that Ash Ketchum should catch. From episode 1, Zekrom zapped Pikachu with electricity, causing it to be unable to use electric moves. And I feel like this unexplained occurrence could have been due to maybe Zekrom sensing how strong Ash's Pikachu was. But of course, this is just my personal take. Furthermore, with Ash flying side by side with Zekrom in the Pokemon Black and White Victini movie and N actually having interactions with Reshiram in the Black and White anime, with it accepting his request about Pokemon and humans living in a world where everyone can coincide, I feel like all of this leads to the Zekrom movie route being the true route for Ash Ketchum's choice. Everything just felt right seeing Ash and Zekrom fight alongside each other against Reshiram ultimately to save Victini plus Iron Dirt Town. Also, with Ash not actually having another electric type Pokemon other than his partner Pikachu, I think that Zekrom would be highly worthy of being the second electric type on his team. Even if Ash was to catch this Pokemon, he probably still have to leave it to protect Unova, especially with the whole balance theme with Reshiram, but I see it being able to aid Ash in important times as he still would own its Pokeball. So overall, out of all the legendaries I'd like to see Ash catch, it has to be my go Zekrom. Be honest, what's one thing you don't like about Liko? The post is by Gigan vs Zilla 2018 again too. 
What a guy. The top voted reply on this topic is by I want to be visible and they say um her social anxiety went away really really fast. Wish they would have expanded on her shyness more. She almost completely got over it in like two to three episodes. Okay I agree with this to a certain extent. It's definitely true how Liko in episode 1 has quickly changed to how she is now in episode 20. Her social anxiety was clear in the early episodes and it was plainly obvious it was a wall that she'd have to work towards and overcome. But the thing is, that whole personality trait kind of vanished real quick and diverted over to Dot who is pretty much now the social anxiety person of the show. With of course her having a secret identity of being Nido Thing and not really wanting to interact with other people. That being said, it's a shame that this aspect of Liko kind of went away because from not being someone socially outgoing to now being a whole lot more socially outgoing in such a small space of time, it has made her character develop in an unnatural way. I think if this progression had happened over a longer period of time, it would have been greatly paced and more people would have loved her character more. But regardless, Liko really has bad things about her and I know a lot of people love and relate to her character a lot. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how much Liko will grow and progress as the Pokemon anime's new protagonist. I had a lot of fun making this video and I'm super curious to know what you guys opinions are on the different topics and hot takes. If you want to see me do more of these, be sure to let me know in the comment section. And while you wait for the next one, click on this video to see if Paul can defeat the Masters 8.